Alright, I noticed that I wasn't able to complete this section of VS VSCPR and Crystal Solids. Alright, so I'm gonna be doing a brief recording on it. So, we have to just look at briefly some Crystal Solids as the last aspect of forces um, of attraction. Alright, so, what are they? So, Crystal Solids, or what we just call crystals, tend to have these distinct internal structures right, with distinctive flat surfaces or faces. Now, this is hinting to a type of a lattice structure that we can see. It seems lattice in nature, right? When we expose these to x-rays, each structure also produces a distinctive pattern, right? And that can be used to identify the material. So when you're doing stuff like um, geology, like said, um, well, geology, for example, right? We can shine light and look at how the light reflect, refracts within the crystal structure to identify whether this thing is a ruby or something else, a different type of crystal, right? The, character, the characteristic angles do not depend on the size of the crystal, by the way. They reflect the regular repeating arrangement of the component atoms, molecules, or ions in space, right? So let's look at the first type that our syllabus looks at the nonpolar or simple molecular structures right solids these are generally made up of either atoms such as argon and helium or molecules formed from nonpolar covalent bonds such as h2 cl2 and i2 the molecule the atoms or molecules in these solids ha are held together by weak dispersion forces or london dispersion forces we spoke about that Right. No, I2 is our example. So looking at the structure, we have a bunch of iodine molecules and they're held together by these weak intermolecular forces to form this type of crystal structure, the molecular structure of iodine. Right. So this is how it looks. Remember, if there are any questions, just drop them in the comment section and we'll see if we can handle them. All right. So we have a repeated structure with flat faces and vertices, right, from this in intermolecular force with the molecular iron, iodine, rather, right, to create this lattice, this crystal structure. Our next structure that we're looking at is hydrogen bonded molecular solids. These solids, um, these solid molecules, right, have polar covalent bonds between hydrogen, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. Strong hydrogen bond may help holds molecules of solids like water together so we're looking at the fact that when water freezes generally i think we explored that in Cape biology unit one so when water freezes it tends to extend to expand to become less dense and form these crystal lattices right so this is the structure of ice really and you can see here that there are intermolecular bonds right hydrogen bonds between the positive hydrogen and the negative oxygen right the partial charges on these areas because of the polarity of the water molecule allows for the attraction and once you continue to freeze the water molecules they tend to stick in this crystal structure so this is this general crystalline structure of ice all right giant molecular structures though you have seen how non-metals form covalent bonds to form molecules. Sometimes these molecules are simple and small, like the chlorine molecule. The chlorine molecule is diatomic, meaning it's made up of two atoms. But sometimes some atoms in certain elements come together to form giant structures, which is made up of millions of atoms. These molecules are called giant covalent compounds. So we're looking at things like silicon oxide, right? usually silicon dioxide so these like silicon silicates and stuff like that create large giant structures and they're usually occurring in something that we call quartz right so they tend to form these large repeated units so that's why they're giant structures giant molecular structures and not simple molecular structures ionic solids now Ions are the particles that make up ionic solids, right? So we know that they are three-dimensional arrangements, that they form lattices, 
held together by strong electrostatic forces. They're hard, they're brittle, they have high melting points, they're electrical insulators when solid, and they conduct electricity when they're molten or dissolved in water. All right, so and because that is because the ions become free to move and conduct electricity, the movement of charge allows for conductivity to take place. All right, we've looked at it before in a little bit more detail when discussing the forces of attraction before. Right, so they form these repeated units, and this is an example of sodium chloride. Right, but they tend to form these repeated units generally within ionic solids. Metallic solids now. Looking at this metallic understanding, right, of these solids, metals are well organized with a lattice of positive ions and a sea of free delocalized electrons, right. So we remember this from general bonding, right? So these electrons are mobile and are distributed evenly throughout the crystals, right? So each metal adds one or more electrons to the sea of mobile electrons, right? So the high electrical and thermal conductivity is due to the high ability for these electrons to move freely, to be delocalized, right? So, looking at those crystals, right, our example from the syllabus is most definitely copper. But there is a metal right here. And I want to see who can name that metal there, right? But that is generally how the crystal um, structure of metals or the lattice structure, right, of metals look. Now, giant atomic or covalent or network solids, right? So, when we talk about giant atomic right covalent solids or we call them network solids we're speaking about elements that tend to form large allotropes or large crystalline structures right for, for crystalline solids right so we're looking at this usually for, for other molecular structures right they don't tend to form networks well the atoms bond to themselves but in some cases atoms can bond to themselves in repeated patterns as you guys would have explored in units not in unit um in c -set chemistry with organic chemistry right and as and in c -set chemistry when you talk about stuff like allotropes of carbon now they tend to be extremely hard and brittle right and they have high melting points right they most definitely don't conduct electricity unless we're speaking about graphite which is an example here so we have an example of graphite and we have an example of diamond structures right so things like diamond and silicon and carbide are two well-known solids right that have giant atomic structures right so we know that on this side is graphite with this repeated unit held together by these four external forces and then we have the diamond structure here so that is the giant atomic solids right so this is just a brief overview of the last part of forces of attraction crystalline solids so the syllabus wants us to look at non-polar molecular solids iodine is the example hydrogen bonded molecular solids water in the stroke in the form of ice is the example giant molecular solids silicon dioxide is our example ionic solids generally sodium chloride is our example metallic solids copper is our example giant atomic solids which diamond and silicon carbide tend to be our types of examples right so that's generally it